Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Now, I did say um, I do a cheeky review on this. Now, you saw me unbox it, but now I've had some time in the saddle to actually experience what the helmet's like. I've probably done a few thousand kilometers with it now, so I'd say that puts me in a pretty good uh, situation. So, this is a review of the Atlas 4.0. Now, this thing is a definite buy. I'd say buy it straight away, right? It's fucking fantastic. I'm also going to talk about the self pin 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 lock and the Bluetooth system, all right? So I'll start off with the simple stuff. If you're looking at this helmet, it does come with two different visors, big plus. It comes with a clear one and a black one. Now, if you're like me, I ride in both situations quite often, so I kind of just went with the clear one and I put a self pin 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 lock thing on it, all right? If that's what you're going for, fucking oath, mate, buy it. It's 150 bucks, great extra, all right? Easy to install, you just pop it in the back and it sits in there and it's done. It takes about 30 seconds to install and it's absolutely worth the money. Secondly, we're talking about the little Bluetooth adapter thing, all right? This is a $250 Australian little extra. It's very simple to put on. You just get your nail, pop off the little clip there and you literally slot this thing in like a Lego piece. The downside is having to pull out all the padding and then stick your stuff in and then put the padding back in. Now, if you've ever played with Lego Technic stuff, so the real like pins and stuff, it's sort of like that, but it's plasticky and it works, but it doesn't work well. Velcro works real easy, but of course Velcro doesn't stay in the place as much. This one, when it's in place, it really sits there, but getting it back in the fucking place, Jesus Christ. It took me five seconds to pull it out and it took me 30 minutes to put it back in. Or maybe I'm just an idiot. That being said, once it's all in there, it's actually really simple stuff. Inside the helmet, once you take off the chin, uh, guard, whatever the hell, wind, wind sock thing, you know that thing, the wind flappy flappy, and the padding, there's little Velcro slots and plugs that you can put the actual stuff in. So you've got your little actual spots on your side for your earpieces, and on the front there's a Velcro thing for the mic, and then there's these little plugs on each side that goes in. And then once that's all done and dusted, it works really well, okay? When it comes to like volume and stuff, controls, it's very simple, all the controls are on the back, very easy to feel, although I wish they were a bit more clicky, because they're a bit vague if you have thicker gloves on. Other than that, sound quality is great. Battery life is phenomenal. I think I've used it for two, three weeks before I charged it once. Well, you know, besides the initial charge out of the box. Other than that, the Bluetooth shock wave thing, phenomenal choice, all right? There's one downside to it, and it's, it doesn't actually do a comms thing, okay? Now, if you're riding a lot with your boys and you all have comms, but you all bought one of these and you think it has comms, wrong. If you have a pillion on the back with the same helmet, you can do a comms thing, all right? But only with the passenger. You can't go 100 meters down the road and do it that way. So if you do want that, you're gonna have to buy another one like a Senna or whatever those other bloody things are. And that's another addition to the helmet and more things inside. Slight downside there, but that's not what that's for, okay? On to the meat and potatoes, the actual helmet itself. Now look, this thing is phenomenal. Coming with the two visors, it's got the nice vents on the top and bottom. Now the vents on this, big improvement over the third one, all right? The third one had a whole bunch of these and you couldn't actually plug them or close them unless you bought another thing separately. This one, don't do that, it's so much better, okay? This one, it's got a carbon fiber shell, nice and light, all right? It's a big boy, but it's nice and light, weighs bloody nothing, okay? All the padding inside's very comfortable, it seals on your head nice and tight, and of course, it really scoops the head. A nice plus of this one is, I don't know if you've used their atlases, but look at that. None of this fucking loop through the, the, the different loops and the D loops and the rings and that. It's just a simple little, little clippy clippy. And then you pull the little red tag, it pops right off. It seems really strange because when it's actually connected, you can't pull it off. But the red thing is just done. All right? That's a little thing. Some people would actually say that's a downside. I don't know why. I've never had an issue with it. If you look at the front, you'll see this little GoPro mount. Now, this is an official Ruroc one, all right? It's very simple, and it's even shaped to the helmet, so all you want to do is just stick it on, and it stays there, and it's never coming off, all right? If you're familiar with Ruroc as well, you'll know the visor situation. You can buy different bunches of visors, and it's not a, it's not a little different pulls, it's just these little pins. Get loosen the pins, and off it comes. Put on a new one, done. You need to change it, off it goes. It's so simple, like this. See that? Pin comes out. And then off it goes. All right, nice and simple. If you look at the back, this helmet's got the nice DOT. It's the fucking stuff, all right? All that safety shit. Ruroc takes the safety stuff pretty seriously. The ECU, uh, ECU. The ECU, uh, 2206, so it's a nice little updated one. I've uh, been told that Ruroc actually really fucking does actually care about safety stuff, which is great. Lastly, when you're actually wearing the helmet, 
The wind noise in this one is greatly reduced from the older models, all right? So uh, apparently the Vitori Pono had horrendous wind noise if you didn't plug those holes. This one, trust me, it's not as bad. Compared to my old helmet, I hear my exhaust a lot more though. I don't know how that's thing, considering it's more sealed, but do with that information as you will. And all right, another good thing is the visor from inside the helmet, you can see fucking, there's a lot of view. The only downside for me is the, um, where the nose piece is, it blocks quite a lot. So if you're looking down to try and see something in the pocket or something, it's a little bit awkward. Um, the reason I used to have the old half helmet one is because you can open it and see shit. This one, nah, nah, that ain't gonna happen, okay? So that's it for the upsides, all right? Nice light helmet, great visibility, looks nice uh, until you touch it. Then you get those oily fingerprints. Vents work really well. Different visors, always nice. Chin strap, beautiful. And the padding, nice and comfortable. Now we're gonna go down to the downsides of these helmets, all right? Big first downside is they're fucking expensive. This one here with all the little bits as well, so the Bluetooth and the pin lock, cost me 1200 Australian dollars. My first helmet cost me 140 bucks. But at least this one fits my head. All right, so there's that downside. A second one, which I didn't actually notice till someone pointed it out to me, is if you look at the vinyl decals on some of the spots, all right, it's not everywhere, but you can see exactly where it was like a sticker and you can see like little creases in the damn thing, all right? So they're only minimal. But once someone tells you about them, you'll see like it's like a sticker when like you have like a bandage and it sort of like goes on a straight surface and it bends a little bit, it's got a crease in it. And once you know about that shit, it kind of puts you off. Luckily, it sort of suits this pattern, so it looks more, you know, vintage. <laughs> but that's what I tell myself to sleep badly. Another downside, which you may have heard me sort of touch night, uh, light on before, this beautiful little vent. Who the fuck thought it was a good idea to put the fucking switch inside the damn helmet? You know how awkward it is to ride with winter gloves and going like, eh. And then the lights change and then you're fucking stuck in your helmet and all that. No, it's a terrible design. If you just fucking put it on the front, it wouldn't have looked terrible. I mean, like, look. You see this? It's a perfect spot. You can just put it there. No one want to complain. No one at all. P.S. I'm not sponsored by them, so don't worry. <laughs> Another downside, like I said, is that fucking padding on the inside, getting it out. If you take it out to wash it, you bet your ass it's going to suck to put it back in. In fact, when I put it back in, one of the pins fell out and they're like these, um, it's a cylinder with a ring around like a washer, but it fell out of the actual slot and it took me so long to try and maneuver it to get back in. Horrendous, all right? Lastly, is that their stock is a little bit hard to get to. Um, now look, there's a, there's a shitload of different options. So if you don't like fucking gold, you can just get matte black. There's like carbon, liquid carbon, colorful shit, glossy shit, brushed metal stuff. Plenty of options with colors and looks but you can only buy it from there. You can't go to a store and be like, what's it like in the flesh? How big is it? How does it feel? Do I actually like it or not? It's sort of take a stab in the dark and buy one. Now the 4.0s are much better than the threes in terms of, because I've seen a lot of people have the buyer's remorse with the threes just because the noise. Luckily that's all been fixed. But you, you measure your head here and then you say, hopefully it fits my head. And if it doesn't fit, they'll either send you new padding or they'll replace it. But apparently it's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but I haven't done it, so I can't touch light on it. All right. Lastly, it's a matte helmet, these ones. Most of them are matte. There is gloss options. If you don't have this issue, um, you don't have the issue. If you have oily fingers and you touch a matte helmet, buy, buy that matte sheen. It gets those fingerprints everywhere. So if you're really bent on keeping it clean and looky, it's going to drive you nuts. If you sort of give up, well, then life is a happier place. Other than that, the Rurok helmet, it's fucking great, all right? I'll give you a little look-see. Once you get it on, all right, it really, ugh, really grabs your head, okay? The visor is nice and easy to get up and you don't have any issues. And the clip is very easy to get on as well. So once you get in there, it's locked. It ain't going fucking anywhere. And then you want to take it off. It's as simple as find that little red thing and, you know, ugh, miss it entirely. And, but like I said, if you want to open that vent in your face, It's an awkward motion, all right? And on the upside, they let in a lot of air. This one in the front in particular, when you unlock that, it's like getting fucking blasted in a wind tunnel, okay? Other than that, I'd still say absolutely go for this helmet. If you're interested in buying a Rurok helmet, these ones are definitely more worth it than the 3.0s. If you want to fork out the money, they do vary in price, depending on which one you get, the carbon ones. They go up at a few hundred bucks. The matte black ones like 600 bucks and all these ones are like the seven, 800 range. 
They do vary a lot, but they are nice. So that's pretty much all I have to talk about with this helmet. They look good, they feel good, they're stylish. I've had a whole bunch of people come up to me in dealerships and talk about it because they're like, holy shit, is that a rock? So if you like that kind of attention, <laughs> there you go. You rock up on your Harley, you rock up with your rook, and everyone's gonna be fucking off their face with you. You have another sports bike that's something fancy, you have a H2 or a Panigale and a rook, my God, mate, you're Mr. Popular. Definitely go on. I like them, definitely recommend them. It has its downsides, but if it had everything up, well, then it'd be perfect and there's no such thing. Get this, this thing good. The only downside for it was it didn't come with this fucking little bolt thing. You need this to attach the damn camera. <laughs> But yes, that's everything about the helmet. So if you do have any questions, leave them in the uh, comment section, I'll answer them. Otherwise, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, take it easy, keep it cheesy, and peace. <laughs>